Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, uh, where I'm going to take a look at this puzzle. I'm, I'm, uh, I confess I'm behind in terms of uh, puzzles that we've had requested on the channel, um, so I'm going to try and record a few of these videos and release them in short order. Um, I know there's nothing worse if you're stuck on a Sudoku than um, sort of continually beating your head against it. So um, this is an expert puzzle, uh, according to the email that we've had. It uh, looks like it's from a phone app. Um, and I'm going to try and do it using standard technique, although of course with an expert puzzle that may be too optimistic. So for example, in this 3x3 block I can lock the ones into just two positions and I like pencil marking that in where we find that. So this, the fact there's a one in one of these two squares and a one here means the ones are locked into those three squares and look we have actually limit the one to this square so let's do that it's a nice start we can see that actually in the central block we can force a one into this square because of this one this one and this one that means this is a one this is a one and that resolves those earlier pencil marks so it's a good start um, okay nines now you can pencil mark nines here because we don't know where a nine will go in this block but we know it will be in one of these three positions in column two that forces the nine in this block into column three where we do have a nine to allow us to make the pencil mark um, da, 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 da. fives can be pencil marked here look fours in oh no fours we've already got fours that's not right uh, ones, threes, sixes into those two positions. There's something. There's something. We look at uh, this is a classic New York Times type trick here. The impact of the central row of the grid on this three by three block. You can see we don't yet have in this 3x3 three three block the numbers 5, 3 and 9. So we can't put a 5, 3 and 9 in any of these three squares. Well there are only three squares left to put 3, 5 and 9 in and that's those squares. So now these three squares must be 2, 4 and 7 in some order and we can pencil mark all of those uh, like this which means this square has got to be a 6. Um, now we can immediately pencil mark 6's there, look. 5's here because of this 5 here and this 5 here. Hmm. Now this column. So what do we need to fill this column? 3, 6, 8 and 9. So this square here is a 3 or a 9. So now we've got a 3, 5, 9 triple in row 4. I'm breaking with pencil marks just to illustrate that point very clearly. So what does that mean? I'm not sure. It's going to be terribly useful. It shifts a 6 into one of those two positions. But we could have done that anyway. Ah, don't think we can go further than that. Oh, ooh, hang on, no, yes, we can. This block, this six here is. This square is restricted. You, and this is, uh, I suppose, something you just get used to to doing. But the more of these you solve. But if you look here, we've got already got the numbers one, two, seven, and eight in the block. We have a 4 down here and a 6 over there. So this square, what can this square be? This square can only be 3, 5 or 9 as well. So there's a hidden triple there. Again, that's really tricky to see that. Um, okay, so there's a 3, 5, 9 triple in, in column 9. Now that probably is helpful. So we need um, 2, 6, 7, 8 I think. So this square has already had a 2, 7, 8 in the block. This square can only be a 6. Let's put that in. 
Now the six is pencil marked into those two squares. And now we can do a little trick with sixes. So if we look, the six, the six in this three by three block is locked into rows seven and rows nine. We don't know which yet, but we know it's locked into one of those rows. Now if we look at this three by three block, the six is locked into row seven or row nine. So however these sixes arrange themselves in the final solution, this puzzle has enough sixes now in row seven and nine. If we try and put a six here, for example, the implications of the pencil marks would be that this would be a six and this would be a six. Clearly impossible. So the six in this three by three block must be in row eight, must be in one of those two positions. And look, there's a six up there. So in fact, this is great, we're going to get six into this position, which resolves the earlier six pencil marks. And because we just took the position of the five in this block, this is the only position left for a five. And, oh, this is great. Now, this is all going to collapse. Um, so now we have five, five. Where can we place a five over here? Well, you might say one of those two positions, but we'd have this three, five, nine, triple down column nine. So this isn't a five. This must be a five. OK. Let's remove. <laughs> OK, so now by removing this pencil mark, this three, five, nine, triple in row four becomes useful because now this cannot be a three or a nine. This must be the five. <laughs> this is very cute. And um, let's remove those two. So we know just check column, uh, sorry, row four again. So now two, four, seven, and eight. Now I can pencil mark eights. Uh, this is a two or a seven, but I don't see a use for that yet. Okay, but now we can look, if we look at the row nine of the grid, you can see we already have the numbers placed one, two, three, four, and five. So we're looking for six, seven, eight, and nine. Well, let's just compare that with column eight there, we already have a seven, eight, and a nine in the column. So this square is very restricted. That must be a six. That's the only number that can go in the square. So six, 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 six. So now this is a six, which means this is a six up here. I think that completes the sixes for the puzzle. Um, and we can go further again, looking at row nine. We need seven, eight, and nine to finish the, the row off. We have a nine here. So this square can only be a seven or an eight. And there's an eight in the column. So this is a seven. Uh, and that's really nice because now that's going to totally unwind this, this selection. That's going to have to be seven, two, four in that order. Um, let's just do this longhand. That allows us to pencil mark those two. This square here now must be a four. So you have a four, a four. Four is locked into one of those two positions and a four here. So that's a four. And one of those two is a four. Uh, we need three and five to complete uh, column eight. And there's a five here. So again, we can, we can actually just write that in. That's five and three like that. Therefore, this is a three here. Um, two and eight there. Three and nine here. And hopefully, we're now on the home straight. There might be more to come in this, but uh, we'll set, oh, in fact, we can finish this off as well. This eight here forces the eight at the top. That must be a nine. That resolves the earlier pencil mark nines. So I'm not doing anything clever here at all. I'm just um, just filling in what's given by the ordinary Sudoku uh, techniques. Nothing clever at all. So this gives us a four seven pair here. Um, coming down the column, you can see that we still need to place four and seven. We can resolve the eight. That's got to be there. This is a 4-7 pair. This is a 4-7 pair. This, these two squares have to be 2 and 5 in some order. That means this is a 5, 5 and 2. 
Um, well, let's pencil mark the twos in there, just for good order again. Seven. Um, okay, so what now? Oh, this five resolves itself. Look, we can place the five there. We need to place three, eight, and nine. So this is a three or a nine. You can see that that matches here. The only position for an eight in column six is that one. Means so this is an eight. Three, seven, and nine to complete row three. The only place a three can go now is here. Um, three, three, that means this is a three, this is a three, this is a nine. And I, I think the puzzle's solved. I, I, mean, I may be wrong, but it looks to me like we've, we've completely broken it now. Two and seven to complete that. Seven and four. I mean, very occasionally you'll get a sting in the tail in a puzzle like this, but I think it's unlikely here. So this was a nice part. This was quite a quite a tricky puzzle actually. I think I've been a bit lucky solving it because there were a couple of points that we needed to spot these triples, and if you didn't spot the triples, you'd be you could have been taking all day. So now you can see this is the only position for a seven. That must be a four, therefore this is a four. And to complete the puzzle, hopefully, if I haven't made a mistake, we're going to be able to go seven and nine. And there we go. So a quick run through today. Thank you very much for sending this in. I enjoyed it. Um, and this was a real lesson, I think, in not adhering too religiously to the pencil marks. Don't get me wrong the pencil marks are incredibly important for improving your solving. But here we needed to be a bit more flexible. We needed to find this 359 triple in this block and then to notice that we had the same sort of restrictions in this square and this square. And once we'd done that, the whole thing fell apart very quickly. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the content, please do subscribe. We really appreciate it. Give us a thumbs up. Um, those of you who are in a position to do so, if you could consider sponsoring us on Patreon, uh, the details are in the uh, description of the video, and that would be really, really appreciated. Again, thanks for watching. Be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.